welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I am Wasbir Hussain. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is now serious about turning his one nation, one poll idea into reality. This will mean holding up simultaneous Lok Sabha and State Assembly polls across the nation, either in a single phase or in a staggered manner. That, of course, if the idea is translated into reality. Now, we in India actually saw the holding of simultaneous polls to the state assemblies and the Lok Sabha between 1951 and 1967. But premature dissolution of some legislative assemblies in 1968 and 1969 disrupted the cycle. What the Modi government is now aiming at is to give the idea legal sanctity so that the cycle does not get disrupted again. The idea was backed by the 21st Law Commission, which argued that it will be better to have simultaneous polls because that will lead to less distraction for governments, reduce policy paralysis, and save public money and overall would be in greater national interest. In 2017, the Niti Aayog took carried out a study on the one nation, one poll idea and the feasibility of implementing it. Implementing this idea will require a constitutional amendment, of course, and ratification by 50% of the states. Therefore, Prime Minister Modi on Wednesday invited heads of 40 major political parties to discuss the issue and reach a possible consensus. But a disoriented opposition, which is still recovering from its worst looks of a defeat, could not unite even on the issue of attending the meeting. The Congress in Trinamool led the bunch of opposition parties which skipped the discussion. Now a panel is of course being set up to take the matter forward. Why should the Congress and other opposition parties like the Trinamool oppose the idea? Is it going to be easy to push through this plan? Many feel this plan cannot be implemented as long as Article 356 exists or as long as the center has the power to dismiss the elected state government. I have got a large panel of eminent people today to discuss the subject. But before that, let's listen into the BJP's point of view, BJP national spokesperson and Supreme Court advocate Nalin Kohli on his party's poll idea. I spoke to him earlier in the day. Let's listen in. Mr. Nalin Kohli, welcome to Notice Live. Thank you, Vasbir. Now it is clear, Mr. Nalin Kohli, that the Prime Minister Narendra Modi wants to push ahead with his one nation, one poll agenda or his idea of holding simultaneous elections in the country. Many in the opposition feel that the Mr. Modi or for that matter the BJP wants to push ahead with this agenda at this juncture because the party has an absolute majority in parliament that huge massive uh, mandate and therefore they want to push ahead with path breaking ideas like this so that it stands to gain in the long run uh, that is what some of in the opposition feel your response there are multiple questions you've raised Vasbir, so let's answer them one by one Right. The first is it's always been clear, it's not just about now, that Prime Minister Modi has been raising the issue and the BJP has been raising the issue of one nation, one poll. Because okay. that is something that we believe is in the interest of the country. Second, to call it earth shattering by the opposition is incorrect. This is how it used to be in India for several decades. Till Mrs. Indira Gandhi actually broke that cycle of elections by calling elections out of time. And that is why it was not earth shattering. We are only talking of going back to right. the norm, which it used to be. Please examine what are the issues involved. If you have one nation, one poll, you finish off the entire exercise of polling, whether it is in the states or whether it is in the center, together. Today, we have virtually elections taking place every year, all the time, at different levels. Now, uh, you see, many in the opposition, I would like to once again try to get a response from you on this. Many in the opposition are questioning the timing of this move. Yes, we all know that Prime Minister Modi has been thinking about this one nation, one poll, or for that matter, holding simultaneous elections in this country. But many are questioning the time timing. They said that with such kind of a strength in parliament, uh, at the end of the day, the government stands to gain. That is, the ruling party stands to gain. 
within the opposition and particularly with regard to the Congress party, isn't it ironical they should bear have such a worry? It is the Congress party that for several decades had a brute majority in both houses of parliament. And parliament is where laws are made. Is this law making exercise as envisaged by the constitution to be denied to the BJP because the people of India have voted in large numbers for the BJP to have a complete majority on its own and a greater majority with its other coalition partners? So are there to be two more systems of governance where when the opposition parties have the numbers, it is okay. But if the BJP has an, uh, the numbers or has a sizable majority, it is to be questioned. The BJP's motive should be questioned. Now, you see, uh, Mr. Kohli, how easy or difficult would it be to push through this plan? First, the constitution needs perhaps several amendments of to course. get this through. The idea of one nation, one poll. And secondly, 50% of the states of in this country need to ratify this critical amendment. Vasveer, let's not forget that under Prime Minister Modi and the BJP government, we implemented the greatest tax reform of GST, which was a constitutional amendment. And it did happen. It is possible for such things to take place because that's how the norm is. That's how it's defined in the constitution, the process, which is a constitutional amendment, which has to be passed by both the houses of parliament and then ratified by 50% of the state legislatures. That's why we are such a healthy functioning democracy. Of course, to bring a constitutional amendment requires political will. It requires a collective will across political, the political spectrum and it requires the due process to be complied with, which it would be. There are obviously challenges that are there, but that is why there is a discussion taking place in the most democratic manner. A, par a meeting was called of all political parties. Those who are raising the greatest questions are the ones who boycotted the meeting. Yes, yes. You are, you are a lawyer of standing. My question to you is, do you think that as long as Article 356 continues to exist, as long as the center has the power to dismiss an elected state government, this idea cannot be implemented? Do you think as long as this exists, this idea cannot be implemented, really? Now, very good question, Vasbir, and I must compliment you for that. Okay. Certainly, these are the issues that require to be looked at in terms of what is the residual impact of a constitutional amendment, if that is to be the case for one nation, one poll, in terms of the applicability of other articles of the Constitution of India, as you've given the example of Article 356. But then, this is an exercise that is not going to be done in haste. It's an exercise that has to be done in a careful, calibrated manner, in a manner that passes the scrutiny of law. Because if at all something is done which is not going to pass the scrutiny of uh, judicial review, because such things sometimes do get challenged before the courts, the NJAC was challenged before the courts, and we know that it was struck down. So therefore, it has to be done in a proper manner. And the government would obviously do that, and it's a wider political consultation that has already begun. Now you see the 21st Law Commission of India had also backed this idea. In fact, it had come out with a you know, draft report, 160 plus pages of draft report, where it suggested a very, very significant, it had made a very, very significant suggestion. It says that whenever there is a no confidence motion in any state assembly, it should succeed with a confidence motion. If the opposition wins the conf vote of confidence, only then the no confidence motion will come into effect. Only then can the government be sacked, otherwise not. So these are critical suggestions. Absolutely. So that's why, we, that's why I'm saying these are issues of great import. And they are not issues that are going to happen on the whims and fancies. It is going to happen with due discussion, with due research, with due involvement of the political scape of others who are constitutional experts. There's a lot of exercise, but the exercise has to be started. And Prime Minister Modi and his government deserve credit that an idea is now being taken to the next level, which is of discussion, of debate. And by boycotting it, I don't know how political parties are serving the larger benefit of uh, the growth of Indian democracy, the maturity of Indian democracy, and in a sense, how parliament may look at it in the future. Yeah. Now, we now know, Mr. Kohli, that the Congress and six other major parties had boycotted or skipped 
the June 19 meeting or consultation convened by the Prime Minister to discuss this one nation, one poll idea. Now, you must also take note of the fact that the BJP and the Congress, that is your party as well as the Congress, had boycotted the Law Commission consultation on the same subject earlier. Papa, yes. There are such instances that have taken place. But can we live only on the basis of what happened in the past? The present is equally important, if not most important. And this was an opportunity, I think, for these political parties to be there in that consultation process. If they have concerns, contribute to those uh, process by pinning down those concerns. After all, Parliament is not, this is a serious exercise. Parliament wouldn't pass that exercise without a proper debate. And if that homework is done in advance, that would lead to the creation of a better amendment and a better law if that was required. All right, uh, Mr. Nalin Kohli there, thank you very much indeed for spe speaking to me on Northeast Live. Thank you, Vasvi. All right, now let's debate to go into the merits or possible demerits of this single poll idea. I'm joined from Guwahati by veteran Congress leader and former Chief Minister of Assam, Mr. Torun Gogoi. In New Delhi, I have Mr. Kisor Desai, a public policy analyst, formerly an OSD at the Niti Aayog and also associated with the Economic Advisory Committee of the Prime Minister. In Imphal, I have Manipur Congress President Mr. Gai Khan Kham. From Kohima, I'll be joined by Naga People's Front spokesman Achumbe Mokikon. In Aizol, I have Mizo National Front leader Dr. C. Lalsang Juala. And at our studios in Guwahati, I have former MP, Mr. Kirib Chalia, Assam BZP spokesman, Mr. Swapnanil Barwa, and Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, professor at Northeastern Hill University, Silong, and a well-known political commentator. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. I'd like to go to you straight, Mr. Torun Gogoi. Why should the Congress oppose this idea? Now, it is very clear that Prime Minister Modi is bent on pushing ahead with this one poll, one nation, one poll idea. Mr. Torun Gogoi, you are a veteran Congress leader, one of the senior most political leaders in the Northeast. Uh, Mr. Gogoi, why should your party oppose this idea? <clears throat> you see, India is a federal country. India is a country consists of the states. And state has a different problem. Every state has its own problems. Whether in Assam, whether Bengal, whether in the South, even North, East, West, every state, when there will be only one, one nation, one pole, one nation is definitely, then the problem of the state problems will be fade away. State problem will not get priority. If, according to me, so state elections should be different, so that state get the priority, center will also know what are the basic problem of Assam, or whether it is a Bengal. Right. Now, Mr. Gogoi, I am coming, I'm coming to all my panelists, I am going to you, Mr. Kesor Desai, in a minute. Mr. Torun Gogoi, do you think it will be easy to bring about this constitutional amendment? After all, 50% of the states have to ratify this. Now, do you think they can ignore the views of parties like the Congress and others and still go ahead with this move because they have such a huge majority in parliament? Mr. Gogoi. You see, they can do it, but he, according to the Prime Minister, he says we must listen to the voices of those who don't get the majority or those, those who are in the opposition. That is the impression. In a democracy, you see, the leader should give due weightage to the views of the opposition. Otherwise, there is no need of parliament. Okay. All right. All right. Now, uh, Mr. Tron Goga, I'm coming to you in a minute. Mr. Kesor Desai, uh, you are directly involved in this study of this entire issue. In 2017, you co-authored a paper along with the current uh, chairman of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Committee, well-known economist, Dr. Vivek Debroy. He was that time a member of the Niti Aayog. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kishore Desai, uh, wow, how easy or difficult is this idea going to be as far as implementation is concerned? Yeah, so uh, uh, Vasbir, if you'd uh, seen our note, I mean, the note was titled Analysis of Simultaneous Elections, the what, why, and how. And the basic objective of that note was to assess, first, 
what what do we mean by simultaneous elections in the first place second uh, is it really practical if it is practical what are the basic challenges that one needs to overcome and then how do we create a framework an electoral setup uh, kind of a system where once uh, you synchronize uh, these simultaneous elections then they are sustained for times to come so when we did all that analysis uh, we sort of you know based on various uh, parameters we figured out that there are immense benefits if uh, the system of simultaneous elections is uh, instituted uh, see the question whether it is difficult uh, to implement or not is i think a secondary question i think what is essentially required in the first place is there should be a broader consensus because right. this is a question of uh, elections and elections impact every one of us right so i think it the, the broad consensus not only between different political parties but also between various institutions like the like the you know election commission the law commission various think tanks the civil society groups the ngos normal public once that consensus is done i think we have enough brain power okay. in our country that Absolutely. we will devise a system Very we true. have given some options the law yeah. commission as you mentioned they have given some options we, will, we are not we saying will. that these are the perfect options but the point is we will, if we will, the consensus is there i would uh, now since yeah. you are on the program mr kishore desha you had co-authored that paper that particular study uh, uh, as to whether how to go about it we'll come to you for greater details and greater clarity on what are the hurdles how easy or difficult we'd like to look into the recommendations of the law commission 21st law commission as well i'm going to eyes all uh, to dr c lalsang juala leader of the mijo national front uh, dr lalsang juala you know sitting in eyes all how are you looking at this one nation one poll idea you know uh, this is a very interesting idea in the sense that you know you see the entire country is on an election mode throughout the year there is policy paralysis in the country today it may be election in your state tomorrow it will be an election now we are getting ready for the elections in west bengal and assam in 2021 then maharashtra elections are coming so everyone is busy and as far as the central leaders are concerned the prime minister is required to travel across the country to campaign for his party so so uh, i mean are you in favor of this idea what do you think did you attend that meeting were you invited no uh, yes uh, thank you as a party we do not yet deliberate this issue but personally i feel that even the political leaders here in the northeast are not well versed in the pros and cons of this since it requires constitutional amendments and ratification of the ongoing systems there is a prerequisite like a rigorous deliberations yeah. and debate okay in the state for successful implementation of this one nation one vote okay so deliberations need of the hour mr gaikan gam you are a very senior congress leader you are the president of the manipur pradesh congress committee mr gaikan gam uh, how are you looking at this your party has of course skipped uh, i will not use the word boycott but you did not attend the meeting convened by the prime minister on the 19th of june uh, how are you looking at this issue let us look at it dispassionately as you have heard the bjp national spokesman he said that congress or any other party should have actually gone to that meeting and presented their viewpoint why did you not decide to present your viewpoint at least uh thank you so much for giving me time to interact with you uh our party opposed the move because the proposals of a simultaneous election to the parliament and the assemblies across the country being mocked mo by modi government is a constitutional perversity and an attack at the very core of democracy in india and any such proposal would be an antithesis to democracy okay. and go against the grain of basic structures in the constitution of india and also the letter and spirit of the demo democracy per se i'm i'm coming and simple right you know a, a sim simple outcome of compulsory simultaneous poll is to deny the people of india right of election of their government and representative the federal structure of polity would stand decimated by such an authoritarian and the autocratic okay. state okay okay 
Okay, I'll come to you, Mr. Guy Kangam. I'm coming to you, Mr. Kirib Salia, right now. But before that, let me go once again quickly to Mr. Torun Gogoi. Uh, Mr. Torun Gogoi, you know, many are saying that there were simultaneous elections in our country from 1951 to 1967. Then it was, it, it was you know, disrupted because Mrs. Indira Gandhi decided to dissolve, uh, you know, she was the prime minister then, decided to dissolve some of the assemblies. Now, my question is, many are also arguing that as long as Article 356 exists, as long as the center uh, holds on to its power to dismiss an elected state government, this idea cannot actually be, cannot really be implemented. How do you look at it? So you agree? As I agree. Then you have to, you cannot impose president rule. Even yeah. there's a breakdown of the law, law and order, if there's a constitution violation also. So in such a case, yeah. eh, for a country like India, full of diversity, eh, where all those basic provisions are necessary. There might be a breakdown of a law and order, there might be a breakdown of a constitutional breakdown also. Then this provision will be, you have to deal with some emergency provision also. And this is possible only when there is a true national party. In India, this is not the case. Here, here national parties are there. Yeah. Yeah. But other, yeah. so many regional parties are also. Yeah. Yeah. Regional parties are also different states in different Very so true. in such a situation yeah. i don't think it is advisable or it is wise eh, for a great country like india which has a full of diversity no. okay, to okay, go for okay. a one okay. poll at a one time okay now 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 mr kirip chalia uh, basically you know, I have to go for a break very quickly. I'll take the opening remarks. Uh, how are you looking at this? Uh, many are saying that this is something which the BJP is trying to consolidate its hold further. Therefore, they're going to uh, they're going ahead with this path breaking idea. They want to implement this. And 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 why should parties like the Congress oppose instead of placing their demands? See, uh, I don't think Congress is opposing uh, the one nation one poll principle. So, but, but uh, still, still, still the I, Congress I, doesn't want I, to go I, and attend I, a meeting? Can, can I finish Please. my sentence? Yes. What is creating problem is, see, before this election, if you remember, you were also very much there during the Lok Sabha election. All kinds of discussions were taking place. But nowhere we had discussed about electoral reforms. Yeah. And the only thing that came up at that time, point of time was EVM. Then there was talk of money power. There was talk of muscle power. Electoral reforms, the, the committees like uh, uh, the law commission report, yeah. the election of commission report, then there are a number of other uh, reports from Dinesh Goswami committee, then mm -hmm. Birappa Moili. Yeah. There were larger issues and there are far more complicated issues. So immediately after the election, if somebody in, in, if he, who is known for his whimsical utterances suddenly take a decision, no, no, we must go for a single election, we must, uh, uh, we must immediately do it, not look for a consensus, remember. In that case, all kinds of controversies start. I think it was, it, uh, the Prime Minister could have placed it in a more balanced and sober way. This is something which no, can be discussed. Uh, and listen, uh, the, 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 the fundamental need for electoral reforms must be above party interest. It must be an apolitical come, a political work. It must be with the greatest amount of consensus in, in, in India. And it can, under no circumstances, give the impression that we are trying to make a, an unitary kind of government and, and, and you know, abandoning the federal principle okay. of Okay, India. so federal principle. Uh, so, Prasenjit, uh, I know you, you look at things in a very critical manner. You are very critical of the establishments generally. Uh, now, the issue is, you know, are you going to oppose this just for the sake of opposing? Are you, uh, do, don't you not think that, you know, the country needs to be, get done with this election process once in every five years? If the law commission has said that, you know, you, uh, law commission wants to curtail the power of the center actually uh, to dilute the article 356 saying that, you know, any move to uh, come up with a no confidence should also follow, uh, should be followed by a confidence motion. If only the confidence motion is passed, then only can the government be sacked. Therefore, preventing the center from immediately sacking a government. How do you look at this? Let's not confuse between procedural aspect and substantial aspect. Substantial aspect of the power of the state is stated by Sarkaria Commission. Sarkaria Commission post-emergency clearly said state's power and center power have to be functionally delimited. I see the danger of mixing up center's power with state's power. India, the union of states, it is one nation but many states. As many states multiple by that so many multiple diverse regional political parties. Why everybody should agree for a common, a common schedule of elections with the center? 
Mm -hmm. What kind of centrism is this? Our country is a federal country. Yeah. Our country is a multicultural, diverse country. Let's not attack on the fabric of the constitution by, by tugging together the center and the state. Let us keep state and the center separate. So, Hence, we should have many elections I instead will, of uh, one election. Absolutely. Uh, before I go to break, very quickly, Sapnel Borwa, uh, you know, uh, there are opinions that saying that, you know, uh, if there is simultaneous elections, the issues, the state specific issues, it's, let's not talk about political parties. The issues cons about a state, the prime issues of a particular state will not get the due attention of the public, due attention of the uh, uh, central leadership, the national political parties and so on and so forth. So the, 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 that's what perhaps many are saying that it will be an attack on the federal structure of the constitution. Uh, well, I don't think, you know, I feel that it is because of the legalese that the whole confusion has come into. An idea has been thrown into the, on the table. Yeah. It is up to people to pick it up. But at all said and done, again, I go back to the assertion that simultaneous election to the uh, parliament or to the state okay. assemblies will depend ultimately on the voter. Right. And the voter will decide on the priority as to which is his priority on that election day. Suppose there is a... So it doesn't matter. No, that's it, what doesn't matter it doesn't any, matter anyway. It will because, not be diluted. Because It'll the voter, be... I, I suppose right. we have reached a level of uh, maturity in democracy among the voters that they know which to prioritize. And so you're which basically saying vote. that don't underestimate the, the intelligence yes. of, the, uh, uh, capacity of the voter, don't underestimate the power of the voter to determine what is wrong and right uh, for their respective state and the region. I'll go for a break, but immediately after the break, I'll go to Kohima, where I have the Achumbe Mokikon, spokesperson of the NPF, and I'll also go to Kisor Desai in New Delhi, Mr. Tron Gogo, and all my panelists. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back, uh, Mr. Kisor Desai. Uh, you know, we have been discussing basically what are some of the problems that uh, any government, see, now it is the BJP government is pushing ahead with this idea. Uh, let's, let's, let's look at it as a government, not forget about the party. Now, what are some of the problems that a government can face in actually getting this idea implemented? Because we had this idea, it is not that it is something new. You know, you had done this study, the Law Commission came up, had supported this idea, came up with its own recommendations. We had this system of simultaneous election from 1951 up to 1967. There was no problem. So what are some of the problems now that any government can face in giving shape to this idea? Yeah, so uh, WASBC, I think the first and the most, the biggest problem, uh, I would say is how do we synchronize the the tenures of uh, parliament and assemblies. See, uh, whatever has happened after 1967, yeah. today we are now in a situation where we just finished the Lok Sabha elections. Immediately in the next two, three months, there will be elections to the state assemblies of Maharashtra and Haryana. Yeah. Then again, immediately as soon as those elections are over, there will be elections to uh, the state assembly of uh, Jharkhand. Then again, one month later, there will be elections to Delhi. So, you know, the point is, on an average, every year there are about five to seven state assembly elections. With such a multiple varied terms of these assemblies, how do we bring all of these assemblies and Lok Sabha in, in a synchronized manner in the first place? That's, I think, the biggest problem. So, and you know, all this needs to be done within the framework of constitution, where there yeah, are but, certain but limitations my, my to the terms be, of various question, assemblies. For yeah, example, again, my question is, uh, 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 Kishore, my question is, you see, Suppose a government has to be dismissed for reasons beyond control. For example, there is a serious breach in the law and order situation. The central government has to intervene. Then what happens? Yeah. Then how will you maintain the continuity? See, uh, as I said, Vasbir, uh, the model that we had suggested and the model that the law commission has suggested takes into account 
such exigencies and le see we are in a democratic system yeah. once a government is elected it is not possible for us to ensure that the government will stay for its term of 5 years anything can happen and we have seen in the past lok sabha dissolved in 13 days state governments have dissolved in you know few months yeah. to a year or so so you know the model that we have done is essentially you then create a system where the tenures are linked so you know something that becomes sacrosanct is the phases of simultaneous elections and then the tenure is essentially changed in a manner that it coincides with the phases for example if we look, the model that we had suggested uh, essentially talks about two phases so elections every two and a half years yeah now let's say okay. if simultaneous elections are instituted today and if a state government assembly falls let's say in the next 3 months then an alternative arrangement where a president's rule is uh, you know is imposed on that state government for some time maybe a year year and a half then elections are uh, uh, elections are held and in that case the the tenure of the state assembly may not be 5 years but it will definitely be at least 4 years all right so i think some flexibility in terms of the term of that assembly if we agree to that then this institution is this the the framework of simultaneous elections is okay. not only sustainable but okay. we can okay. easily work okay. it okay. out without considering uh, considering the diversity considering that our political parties are on extremely different poles altogether on different sides of the spectrum i think it will be quite a challenging task to uh, arrive at a consensus but yes nothing is impossible i'd like to go very quickly to mr achumbe mokikon spokesman of the naga peoples front the main opposition party in nagaland achumbe mo how are you looking at this one nation one poll idea uh, have you really thought about it at all how does it impact the smaller states in the northeast for example uh well waspir i joined you little late uh, i had not been following what has been discussed by the previous speakers yes. but uh, as far as the npf naga peoples front is concerned uh actually as of now one country one election is only a slogan as of now however uh if this has to be pressed hard and if this has to be imposed upon it is against the very essence of unity in diversity which india as a country used to cherish one number one number two it is also totally against the federal structure of the indian constitution because as far as india is concerned every state enjoys certain liberty uh in terms of functioning in terms of and so on and so forth right. now uh how right. can we how can we impose upon this election the recent election which we have just experienced starting from 11 no, april no but but, but we'll, we'll, we'll go into that we'll go into that but the last parliamentary election yeah. that it, itself um, uh it, it has it, it has taken more than a month now another point which before you i i want to make one point very quickly see, yeah see the government of india was trying to impose hindi hindi as compulsory for the whole of india no let's not go into all that you know there will be no end to issues to you see as far as let us focus yeah, yeah. No, no no let no. us focus on the elections that, that is why uh. yeah yeah i i I'll, i'll come back to you achumbe exactly. i'll come what back what i'm trying to say is there is a similarity here there is there is a similarity uh. okay 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 so there is a seven so you are basically saying that nothing 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 has to be imposed uh, let me quickly go to mr torun gogoi once again mr torun gogoi you know many are saying that this is a move the allegation uh, the the skeptics are saying that the prime minister uh, being an ag aggressive personality uh, in the sense that he is a very proactive political leader uh, he is a pop popular political leader with such a massive verdict now to back him up he is trying to more like an american presidential election and that the ruling party will be an advantage and it will be more like an american presidential election and changing parliamentary form to election of a presidential form that is the analysis given by some people do you subscribe to this idea i do i do in fact he wants to a presidential type of election in you agree? fact he wants to follow the american style he wants to follow the corporate rule corporate i am saying 
is it is the same system he was going to footstep of american style corporate few corporate will do it hmm? few will corporate will will well dominate economy also so this is very dangerous thing in a country like mm -hmm. india which is full of diversities yeah we cannot leave your future economic policy at the end of the few corporate okay uh, mr let me go to i'll i'll take your response uh, sopnanil barua uh, mr gaikhangam uh, you know your your senior colleague mr torun gogoi says that uh, the bjp and prime minister modi wants to convert the elections in india into an american style elections presidential form type of an election do you subscribe to this view are you in sync with what your own party leader mr torun gogoi is saying Yes, everybody knows India uh, is a different, di different kind of uh, situation uh, uh, than the America. So it is some, something impossible to uh, follow what the, the uh, America is uh, implementing. So because we call, and uh, we oppose because the, of the fact that the concept of federalism in you know, in, ingrained into our constitution and multi-party parliamentary system would also be in danger. If simultaneous election take place and the voice of regional parties would not be heard anymore. The bottom line is that this is another absurd proposal that disregards the any constitution known yes, and but, but established Mr. True, but Mr. Gaikangam, you are saying the voice of voices of regional parties will be ignored. But aren't you fighting the regional parties? Uh, aren't you fighting uh, the regional parties in a state like Manipur, for example? Why are you bothered? No. When when we talk about, we have to uh, think of all the, po the political parties also. There should be a national consensus. Uh, on such issue. Otherwise, you know, it will be very difficult to implement it. That's what I feel. Okay. So, Bosby, can I yes. pick up from yes. that Supreme last Bar statement? Yes. I think the last statement says it all, that there must be a consensus. The Honorable Prime Minister has placed an idea on the table. He has initiated a discussion. And everyone else who is opposing the idea is seeing ghosts where there are none. Yeah. I mean, okay. it is not yet time to really see the ghosts Yes, Kish Kish Kishore Desai, you want to say something? Yes, Kishore Desai, come in, please. Yes. And then, Vasbi, just, just before yeah. I finish, there yeah. is, see, there yeah, is no, no effect when you are to, talking about national uh, right. NRHM or when you are talking about the uh, Sarva Siksha Vijan right. or when these, you know, where the state and the centre are working together in tandem. Very true. Now, I think it's an idea of both the state and the centre working together in executing in, the in, in development. Sync. You mean to say in sync? Yes, yes, yes sure. Come in, yes, sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Vasbi, see, I just wanted to add one point there. Um, you know, in, the, in our note also we had mentioned, I think Orissa is a very classic example when we, uh, so I'm not, uh, you know, discounting the importance of multi-party system, but the point is I think we should, when we talk about uh, the impact of simultaneous elections on smaller parties, regional parties, we should also take into consideration, consideration the maturity of voters. So what happened in uh, 2019 general elections, Orissa has a simultaneous elections. Uh, the legislative seats, the number of legislative seats in Orissa is, I think, 146. Uh, Biju Janta Dal, which is a regional party, got, I think, 112 uh, seats. And BJP, uh, I think, got uh, 25, 26 seats. On the other hand, in Lok Sabha, out of 21 Lok Sabha seats in Orissa, uh, Biju Janta Dal got 12 yeah. and uh, BJP got 8. So, you know, so the point I'm trying to say is, Voters are mature enough to voters know are, who voters vote for are in the mature Lok Sabha enough. elections and you who think to I, vote I for. I think my initial assertion has been corroborated by yes. these studies. Yes, yes. Uh, uh -huh, Prasenjit, yes. Uh, how do you, I mean, from this conversation now, is basically saying that the Congress is opposed to this. I'm coming to you, uh, Mr. Torun Gogoi. The Congress basically saying that it will be an affront to the federal nature of the constitution and that the regional parties may lose their voice. I'm coming to you, uh, Dr. Lal Sangjuala as well. Yes, uh, Prasenjit, how are you looking at it? Do you also agree that this will be an attack on the federal uh, system? V voters' maturity, if one is talking about that, that would mean a certain kind of constitutional maturity. If voters have voted in two different ways or one different ways, that's not a kind of an ideal case. The question is, because of variety of voters, variety of issues, 
and each state having its own specific issues, whether states are not empowered to have its own election or not, whether Indian democracy is a top-down process where we give more importance to the center or we give more importance to the state because it's a bottom-up constitution. Yeah, but if it is a bottom-up constitution, then we must have many elections. We can't have one election. Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, do you have any doubts about the uh, about our constitutional maturity? Uh, you said, you know, voters' maturity means constitutional maturity. Do you have any doubts on that count? The uh, skeptic uh, comment is because that India is a union of states. That is sacrifice. India is nothing if there is no states. If there are states, each state will have its own prerogative. It cannot be dictated from the center. And if okay. we start uh, doing it, we are eroding the Dr. very basis of Dr. democracy. Dr. Lal Sangjuala, as the leader of a regional party, that is a powerful regional party in a small state, Dr. Lal Sangjuala, uh, do you also feel somewhere that if there is one election in this country, the voices of the smaller states, the voices of the regional parties will somewhere, you know, uh, get buried in this entire national elections, the focus will be on electing the prime minister, not the state assemblies. Do you, do you fear that that is going to happen? No, as of now, I do not see how the election should destroy the diversity of the nation as apprehended by our Congress brothers. But there is more important issue that when polling as the whole nation, Will the majority influence the minority in the uh, North States, like uh, the smaller uh, people, relatively lesser people? Will they influence uh, our voting pattern? That is what I apprehended. Okay, uh, Mr. Torun Gogoi. Apprehensive, I mean. Right, Mr. Torun Gogoi. Uh, Mr. Torun Gogoi, you know, the, let's let's look at little closely into the Law Commission uh, to 21st Law Commission recommendations. It says that yes, that is of course coming from the fact that if the centre has the power to dismiss the elected state government, then you know this idea cannot be implemented. So the Law Commission came up with an idea that you cannot sack a government unless the alternative government has the confidence of the state legislature, state assembly. Uh, now these are critical suggestions. Uh, given by various uh, uh, agencies. The Law Commission is one of them. The Niti Aayog study also had come up with specific recommendations as uh, one of the authors of this study who is in our panel today. On our panel today, Mr. Kisor Desai has said. Uh, Mr. Toron Gogoi, how do you look at this? You see, that is also true. You can examine also. But one thing I must say, how far the government is sincere, I have my doubt. If you ask me why, why they didn't hold the Jammu and Kashmir assembly election together with the parliament? Why they didn't do it? They've been talking about one nation, one, one poll, where the DU is there. Normally it should have been along with the parliamentary election. They didn't do it. So when I would my say my is their intention is how far their intention is also sincere. I have my doubt. Why didn't do okay. it? Okay. Uh, Which was due normally. Absolutely. So even Goro, they didn't hold the election also. Why did you? If you are talking about one nation, one poll, Mr. Torun Gogo is asking you the question as to why did the government then not hold the simultaneous elections in Jammu and Kashmir this time round? Well, I think the essential question of not holding a Jammu and ele Kashmir elections was basically law the and law, order. law and order point. Okay. And I think uh, the Pulwama attack and uh, the aftermath there was, uh, the feedback that as far as I know... Okay, law and order. You're, law you're and basically order saying that it's law and order. That was uh, let, me, let me take this to Mr. Kishore Desai. Uh, Mr. Kishore Desai, you know, Okay, the BJP spokesperson here is saying that it is absolutely the law and order that prevented the government this time from holding simultaneous elections in JNK, although the elections were due there. Uh, there were simultaneous elections held in Arunachal Pradesh, there were simultaneous elections held in Sikkim, but it was not held in JNK because the law and order situation was not good. But in the future also, similar kind of a situation may arise, isn't it? So, can we really assure, can we be assured of the continuous simultaneous elections in this country. Uh, because this kind of exigencies will, will come now and then. 
Absolutely, absolutely, Vasbir. I completely agree with you that we, uh, you know, uh, the the framework of uh, doing simultaneous elections should be developed in a manner that such exigencies should be foreseen and proper solutions to take care of such exigencies should be inbuilt in, in that kind of a system. system. You know, so the point I was trying to say is when we say simultaneous elections, typically people, I mean, most of us have more or less two options in mind. One, simultaneous elections is a system where we have only one elections and then the next election is after five years. So, Lok Sabha and all the state assemblies together in one go and then the next round of elections is after five years. The second system is which we had proposed and in fact what uh, election commission had also proposed and what law commission has also suggested as one of the options is have elections in two and a half years, so two phases. So, you know, if uh, cases like JNK happens where because of law and order, for some reason or for whatever reason, the elections are not able to be held with the first phase, there are always <laughs> possibilities that you can hold elections in between and you can adjust the tenure of the assembly. So, tomorrow, for example, if the Jammu and Kashmir, uh, if the government thinks that JNK elections can be held, let's say, in January. So, you know, the tenure of JNK assembly may not be necessarily five years in that case, maybe slightly less, maybe four and a half years or so. So, right. you know, the point I'm trying to say is once there is a broader consensus in this system, then the solutions as to how do we sustain is always possible. And we have already a lot of options on the table and we have enough brain power, right? And right. Some, some of the best experts we have. And I think that can be done. Right. It's not a big problem. Chalia, you had been a Congress MP. Uh, you know, my question is, you know, what is the point in actually not attending a consultation right from the word go? You know, now that you have boycotted uh, your party has boycotted the first consultation of June 19. There is no guarantee that you will go into further consultation. Now, being a being a major national party, being the main opposition party in the country, what kind of a contribution you are making by not putting forward your views? Like in this, in a in a one-hour television debate, in a 90-minute television debate, so many things are coming up, so many points of view, important suggestions, interesting ideas are coming up. In a political meeting, which is chaired by the prime minister, attended by the chiefs of all the political parties, why shouldn't the Congress go and and place their point of view? Who knows? The Congress might come up with a very interesting contribution. I'll, I'll, I'll give a very simple answer. And uh, I mean, no, uh, it's not a sarcasm. See, I don't believe that this particular meeting would have decided the fate of... No, 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 nobody is expecting that. Nobody, nobody, don't give amateur answers. Can I, can I complete? We are, we are, nobody is an amateur on this show. I think it is more immature Nobody is an amateur on this show. Nobody expected, nobody was expecting that everything will be sorted out in the first meeting. But, 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 we have to make a beginning. Can I continue? Yes, please continue. Please continue. I think it is more amateur to say that you will hold you'll dissolve a particular assembly for some reason. Nobody said that. No. no, no. If you are holding, if, a, if an assembly falls, for example, in three months. No, what is it? the question can of you, the can assembly you falling? Me, can you allow me no, to no, no, no. You are not talking. Not you are not allowing me to. Okay, okay. To, come on, come on, come on. Place yes. my argument. Yeah, please. please an assembly gets fall, an assembly falls in, uh, government falls in an assembly in one year. You hold it for, for another presidential election for one and a half years. You are giving powers to the brokerage. It becomes an oligarchy. It doesn't become, an, no, it no, doesn't become a democracy. One second. These are fundamentals of democracy. These are fundamentals of a state's right. Secondly, you are talking about let money power. Me, one second. Me, one no, second. Nobody's talking, talking about, about money power. power. No, reducing, no, no. reducing expenditure. So I'm saying, what about uh, IT, IT for, uh, the RTI for uh, political parties? What about paid news? The scars of paid news. No, what okay, about okay, okay, you are not dividing. You are not dividing. My question is: Why my are those is, not given priority? No, no, why, no, no, why, why, why are these red headings being floated? Why are these red headings being floated? And why are these balloons being flown to divert attention from the real, real problems? No, no, no. Question of not the question of balloons or anything. It is just as I said that the idea has been thrown in. It is up to you to propose. Absolutely, we continue. Let me come in. Let me come in. No, no, no. Please, 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 please. Let me come in. I, I'll, I'll come to you, Prasenjit, yeah. but my question is, the <laughs> question of the assembly being dissolved or not is not the issue. issue is now whether we can implement this idea or not. If we have to implement this, how, we, how can we implement this? The, a, 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 a framework, a formula has to be evolved. That is what Kishore Desai has been talking about. Now, basically, Prasenjit, now, how can a party like the Congress not even attend? And 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 Mr. Kirib Chali, a veteran political leader, is saying that oh, nobody should expect that this meeting uh, will resolve the issue. Who, who is expecting that? Nobody. This is the first meeting. You are supposed to go and make your valuable. This is not the first meeting. This is.
this has been yes. decided for over a lot no, yes, long period of time. In fact, a framework should be evolved in such a manner that the framework is not a totalic. It is not an imposing framework. But it's a framework that evolves from the bottom. Okay, let me... Now, let the me, framework I mean, that has evolved in the constitution see, is that is of state-specific elections. Let me go now, to... Now, we are talking of consensus, consensus in advanced Western democracies. We have a concept called dissensus also. Dissensus, difference and multiplicity. Okay, I'm coming As to, opposed to an consensus. opposition. I, 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 will, I, will go to, I will go to Mr. Tron Gogoi, but Achumbe Mo, you have been hearing this heated debate. The issue is... You know, what are the pros and cons of this idea? And how can it be implemented or whether it can be implemented? Let us focus the discussion on that. What are the merits and demerits of this idea? What can it impact? How can it impact on smaller states in the Northeast, for example? I would like to seek Kishore uh, Desai's opinion on this immediately after the break. Can it impact differently in smaller states? Achumbe uh, Mo, you know, how, what do you have to say now? You have heard several speakers by now. Yes, I think the recent example is the case of Jammu and Kashmir, which some of the speakers, earlier speakers have rightly mentioned. They have cited law and order problem. Now, if this concept has to be implemented, tomorrow, if states like Nordis, especially Nagaland, Mani, some, you name it, any of the Nordisian states, if these parties are not in favor of the government that is uh, at the hands of affairs in the center, they will put up any reason saying that there's a law and order problem and therefore election cannot be held simultaneously with the central. And they may even cite Monson, simple uh, reasons which I'm yes. trying to tell you. So these are the few reasons which the central government Okay. We'll try to put up an argument saying okay. that because of this reason, now, because of that me... reason, we cannot have yeah. all the election. And okay. therefore, practically, as of now, it is not possible. It is something which, which I've mentioned earlier. Yeah. They try to impose Hindi all over India. Is it possible for Northeastern states? Is it possible for the, for the uh, South Indian states? Likewise. All right. All one right. nation, speaking, one right. language, speaking, one yes. nation. Coming, from coming, 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 coming. I, I mean, coming what you are saying is that, and, uh, that nation basically like India, you have as certain of now, apprehensions. These yeah, apprehensions yeah, are coming out one time. by it one. And these apprehensions have to be addressed before it finally takes the shape of a legal uh, okay, bill or a constitutional amendment. Absolutely. And say, unless the apprehensions are placed on the table, do you expect anybody to really pick up and cull the ideas from you? With, if you don't come out, I mean, democracy essentially is more than that. Point is it the that only is priority is argument for electoral reforms? No, Are no, there no other issues? No other important things to yes, very, decide. Very important Simultaneously, important these can be put together right as a part recall, of the total package. Right to recall of a non performing representative in, is part of democracy. Of right? Transparency which, of political uh, parties. We have not implemented in India. So, if we implement right to recall and we don't give election at any point of time, some people who suffer from election fatigue, they can only think about simultaneous election. Okay, uh, I'll go for a break, but before that, very quickly, Mr. Torun Gogoi, uh, the Congress at the end of the day had boycotted the June 19 meeting convened by the Prime Minister. Now, once again, I'm asking, what is the point in boycotting? All, all parties, many of the parties have decided not to go. This is sometime, if they don't give any weightage. You see, why? You see, they know the Modi won't give any weightage. You will just invite. Invitation is, a, you must give due weightage. If they give due weightage, then definitely they will go. If they know that he will not do will just for inviting, just for technicalities, why should you go? If I know uh, that is, you see, they will not accept my, what you call request, or my genuine grievances, or he will not give weightage, then why should I go? If I know, if I know, no, definitely he will give my due weightage, he will try to his best. No. Uh, I, I mean, if I yeah. can convince him, I give it. Yeah. My, if no, if I know very well is, that he will not give what is, he is so proud man, eh? and he will just brush aside all. So do you go uh, only just for a, no, just no, here well, invited? I, 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 so I don't understand my... the reason why Kirip Chalia is uh, uh, laughing. He cannot control his laughter. I don't know the reason. Uh, if you can elaborate, that will be nice. I'll go for uh, a break. No, the, 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 the fact is, it's a question of credibility. When a prime minister gets a ma huge majority, and it comes out with, with proposals for policy changing, 
lot of hard work has to be done off the, off the, off the table in the first. He should have sent his emissaries to talk to the political parties, which he could have done. He could have sent some other people to find out and cause the mood of other political parties. Then he make an invitation. You don't do anything now off the hand like that. The BJP, so, you know, his sincerity the BJP, and credibility is the doubted BJP, by the opposition. The BJP may say that is the Congress style. Go slow. Don't, don't follow. Don't follow Congress's bad things. Follow Congress's no, good no, things. That, that is not the thing. I think it's, uh, if I can use the word, Bengali word called Nakami. I think I'm seeing a bit of Nakami in the whole idea that, see, we, we are sulking. You please, we are we, we have not been given due so, importance. So, Prasenjit, we have not, we have been... do you think that the opposition is still recovering from the disastrous performance in the last election and therefore can do not know what to do? Is the, do if, you think if opposition is recovering, the victorious party is suffering from an election fatigue. Why should they suffer from an election fatigue? Let there be election festival of democracy throughout the so year. So you mean to say, you mean to say, organizing a consultation uh, to discuss the one polo idea is election is it, is it does it reflect election fatigue? Obviously, without they don't proper want, preparation, they don't want election. So number one, one election fatigue. You are still it's suffering election from election fatigue. fatigue. That is what Prasenjit is saying. Fatigue of victory. Victory creates a fatigue mean? in the no, minds no. of the uh, some uh, major political parties. What I am saying party. is that election avoidance is something which I am seeing. In election the whole idea. Of, election about, about, uh, about I'll election. go for a break. I, I when I come back, I'll go straight to Kishore Desai to take his opinion on what impact could it possibly have if we have cemetery selections in smaller states. I'm talking from the northeastern point of view. We'll go for a short break. Don't go away. You'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, Mr. Torun Gogoi, I'm sorry, but I have to repeatedly ask you this question, you know, uh, you know, don't you think uh, that it was ab like abdicating responsibility? If the Congress thinks that it is the primary opposition party, if at all, uh, with 52 seats, it, of course, uh, you know, it's a big national party. Now, don't you think it would have been better to go and actually argue your case out in this consultative meeting? Set the agenda for future discussions on this. At the end of the day, it cannot happen in six months, one year, two years. It may take a long, long time. It may even not happen in this term of the Modi government. We all know that. These are very, very tricky issues. But, but don't you think as a veteran Congress leader that it would have been better for the Congress party to send a veteran representative to this meeting to argue and place the points? You see, before that, why he should announce one, he says, let there be discussion on. He should first say, this is my proposal, we have to discuss about it. First he decided one poll, one nation already decided. Once you decided, what is the point of having a discussion? This is my case. No, yeah, first you say, yeah. we are proposing, yeah. we'll yeah. see whether it's feasible or not. We want to hear your we'll voice. Yes. That, that I understand. Once you decide a government, after that you call, then now, there's no point of uh, inviting them and no point of attending. Right. Uh, before I thank you, Mr. Torun Gogoi, uh, you know, the government has now formed a panel to go into this whole idea, uh, whether it is feasible, not feasible, if feasible, how, how can you go ahead? Is the Congress party going to cooperate with the panel that is being set up? I don't know whether call or not. Congress views is everybody is known. What is the question of, of co-person or non-co-person? Since our views are already known, you see, no point of going to panel also. No. These are already known. Eh? Right. So that we are opposing it. Not only we. Many other parties, I don't know how many parties will accept. I think it's a two-party. Except the, what you call... Uh, Karnataka, oh no, not Karnataka, this Andhra, Vyas party and thing, this Odisha party. No other party has agreed till today. Right. Okay, uh, Mr. Tron Gogoi, thank you very much for joining me 
on the notice tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, you see, the veteran Congress leader, Torn Gogoi, very, very clear there that the Congress is not even going to, there is no point in, in cooperating or not cooperating with the panel. The issue does not arise because he says that Congress's viewpoint is well known. Kishore Desai, uh, coming back to my question to you, you know, suppose, assuming that, you know, this idea is turned into a reality, Kishore Desai, I want Kishore Desai on the screen, uh, you know, I want everybody on the screen, actually. Uh, now, uh, Kishore Desai, how can it impact smaller states in the Northeast, for example? Everybody on the screen? Yes. Uh, Vasbir, I don't think it will have any, uh, you know, see, there are definite benefits of having a simultaneous elections for the entire country and for all the states. Now, in terms of northeast states which have their own peculiar problems and which are smaller uh, in size compared to other uh, states, I don't think there will be any major disadvantage per se. You know, one of the panelists was saying that one of the possible uh, uh, problems with, uh, with uh, simultaneous elections is that some of the state-related issues may be sort of, you know, may take a back stage, yeah. stage and possibly national issues may become more important. But the point is we have seen, I, I mentioned the example of Orissa, where people knew who they are voting for in uh, central elections and who they are voting for in state elections. So I think uh, over a period of time, the system will adjust so politicians will know uh, what will sell, uh, you know, for what election. So, I mean, they, they will sort of prepare their election strategy accordingly. And even voters will have the maturity to understand who they are voting for, uh, depending on the elections. In no, fact, you know, cost, of course, I mean, people do not give too much of... Uh, uh, importance to that, but states will save costs because a part of that cost will be then borne by the center. So, uh, Mr. Lalsang, Dr. Lalsang Juala and Mr. Achumbemo Kikan, Dr. Lalsang Juala first, uh, you know, are you apprehensive that one nation, one poll can adversely impact smaller states? <laughs> As I've said before, when when polled as a nation, yeah. uh, a relatively lesser people of the North East states may be impacted, because when the majority, when the majority uh, cast their vote, and, and if there are any mm, campaigns which is very big, then the lesser people, the minority might be influenced by the uh, majority easily. Okay, that is that is the view coming from Aizol. Achum Memo, how do you respond to that? Uh, uh, are you in agreement with what Dr. Lal Sang Jawala of the MNF is saying? There is. Well, yes, definitely it will have an adverse impact on a smaller states like Northeastern states because uh, our local issues, regional issues will be sidelined in the if we are to go with one country, one election. Second, the first point. Second point, see, Nagaland, in 19, Nagaland has experienced the longest president's rule from 1975 to 77. And unfortunately, at that point of time, the Koch party, my party, was at the hands of affairs in the, in the state of Nagaland. Okay. Now, any moment the central party, the central government will impose president's rule if it is not favorable for them and... How long we have to wait for that duration to complete, to have one election, one, one country, one election? These are the few apprehensions which we have because we ourselves have experienced. And therefore, as of now, it is not practical, it is not relevant. And uh, you see even the 97th Amendment of the uh, Constitution where the ministry was downsized to 15% yeah. or 12 ministers for a smaller states. For states like the Northeastern states, and especially Nagaland, we have a composition of tribe, okay. we have a composition of districts, uh, regional aspects. So all this has to represent the government. And okay. only then, no. government can Was run... Uh, yes, can yes, I make a point here? Yes, please. I, mean, I, I, I had just effectively. mentioned it briefly so these are a initially. Few which we are that, see, if now, you are having... Not, I mean, what is uh, politics for? Politics is for development, for at least in India and the smaller states also. Now, when you are happy with the national programs in every aspect of development, be it education, be it electricity, be it roads, be it health, I mean, why do you think that working with the government or the, the, in the election itself, that no. these will be issues yeah, which, uh, which will suppress the... I get your the... point. I get your point, Sopranil Borwa. But the percentage this was, looking at, we are, we are talking about, 
we are talking about the issues of justice delivery system, distributive justice, uh, equitable uh, development, and so on and so forth. But do you think the central schemes are enough to take care of the states? That is what the Congress is saying, basically, that it will impact or infringe upon the uh, federal structure of the Constitution. Uh, I mean, do you think uh, these are some of the concerns, actually? I mean, this is just tip of the iceberg, which you have said. I don't repeat that. But more importantly, in this proposal for simultaneous election, elections of local bodies, corporations, no, municipalities. No, that will be kept out of the uh, out, 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 kept out. out of the purview. That itself that is, shows. That is known. That is that understood. That itself Why shows not club the local, local problems, the urban problems are not captured by this simultaneous poll. They are kept out of it. Now, what kind of poll we are proposing here? We are proposing a symbolic poll only, which will eat into the very essence of democracy, democracy that thrives on difference. Democracy that thrives Kishore on Desai. plurality. Uh, democracy Desai, that heard... thrives on different timing of elections. That democracy will ever be lost in this country. Kishore Desai, how do you respond to this, uh, uh, this argument that if one nation, one poll, only parliamentary and state elections will be only symbolic elections and that the real elections are the elections to the local bodies, decentralized elections? Yeah, see, uh, Vazbir, I... Uh... You know, uh, I think the point that uh, uh, we had written in our note is that there are more than 2.7 lakh panchayats, uh, the third tier uh, institutions in the country. <laughs> and if we start, uh, you know, into a process of synchronizing elections to 2.7 lakh institutions, then we are in a big mess. So I think the point is, first, do we agree that frequent elections in India, Lok Sabha and State Assembly is, is a problem or not? If we do agree that there are many problems because of the frequency of election, then at least start with uh, parliament and state assemblies first. And now we are in a situation where we are not even having a consensus on parliament and state assembly. If we bring 2.7 lakh uh, institutions, Panchayati Raj, then, then I don't yeah, think yeah, this yeah. consensus will no, ever no, be possible. No, I think, I think, so Chalia. Simultaneous elections to parliament and... Uh, very true. We'll fix that. Uh, I'll ask my producers to actually fix that audio with uh, Kishore Desai because I'm coming to him right now once again. Uh, 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 Kirip Chalia, you know, Kishore Desai there has made a very interesting point. First of all, do you agree that the, the country being on an election mode almost all throughout the year is impacting on growth and development of India or not? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll come to the fundamental forget question. Forget about Congress, just, forget I, about no, BJP. No, I'm, 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 Talk I'm, as an Indian. I'll come to the fundamental question. The fundamental question is, is India right now not having one nation, one election or not? I think we have a one nation, one election. Election to the national parliament. That that election is one nation. It is not, it's not that various, nation, various nations are... Uh, yeah. The other elections are for the state assemblies. Now, there can be certain amount of uh, uh, adjustment here and there. But you know, to say that if just only because if you compress all the elections into one election and you, that will be the panacea for all electoral reforms, all the electoral malpractices, I think that is totally wrong. No, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just come to the point. I think the more important questions which are relevant today and which came into public domain in the, in the last recent election is the question of the credibility of the EVM, how to restore that credibility, number one. Number two, what about the sanctity of the election commission? Has it, has it been compromised? Has the impartiality of the election commission been compromised? Many political parties, national politi parties, like the, great, the, the opposition party, the leading opposition is yeah. raising question three. What about the what about our four C's we talk about? Criminalization, corruption, casteism, communalism, these are very fundamental points. And then yes. we are talking only about structural Wha changes. Was, 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 and what was federalism? Yeah. 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 I, I think one last point. Last point. Last point. Last point. Last point. Last last point. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Last point. 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 Last point to you know, float a balloon. Why I'm saying is, don't forget that Indian voters, in spite of all the uh, all the corrections you have made, all the praises you have given, they have been subjected to allurements. They have been subje subjected oh to caste divides. Oh my God! Don't been insult to the all Indian voter. Don't generalize. Election is the root of all, all the Indian voter. Don't generalize the Indian voter. Don't generalize the Indian voter. I think Kirip Kirip one yes. Kirip Chalia's assertions is one. He is just only. This is something which the Congress party should have raised in the June 19 meeting 
which they have avoided and missed the chance. No, no, no. I think. the main I, point I, is, I think if you consider the main point, doesn't it doesn't uh, make no, the border? No, 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 Kareep no, Salia, I am not a politician. I've never fought elections. Kareep Salia has to oppose it for the sake of opposing because he has to, you know, make a point because he belongs, I think, still to the Congress Party. But my <laughs> point is, my point is, my point is, do you agree or not? that governance in this country is being hampered because the nation is on an election mode all throughout the year. But that is something like a counterfactual proposition. Article 40 of the Indian Constitution, the directive principle says, Gram Shabhas are to be empowered and Gram Shabhas have to meet and elect their representatives. And it will, across, it will happen across all the villages of the country. That was Gandhi's dream. Now, from this decentralized democracy, we are moving to a highly centralized democracy controlled by media, money, power, and certain other factors. Now, we have to really look at the health of the India's democracy, which is in utter peril at this moment, despite okay, having okay, big elections. Okay. We don't have right okay, to control. Uh, I think uh, your basic uh, point you know, that you are making Dr. is that too Dr. much Dr. of election Dr. Dr. is Dr. preventing Dr. all this Dr. kind Dr. of thing. Dr. Lalsan Juala, uh, you know, I know that you fought the BJP in the state elections, but Damanaf is very much a part of the NDA. My question to you, Dr. Lal Sonjuala, not, not as an MNF, as a citizen of this country, do you agree or not? This was the question which Rajiv Desai had asked a little while ago. Do you, first of all, agree that governance in this country is taking a hit because the nation is on an election mode? Now we are having the elections in Maharashtra, Haryana, the Prime Minister Code will go there. Then, then why come should back the Prime Minister go there? Why not? Leave it to the state leaders. Why, why, why should the Prime Minister go there and campaign? He is the leader he's of the party. party. So weak in the state. He is the leader of the party. It requires Sapna the Congress. Why, the why, should the Cong Sapna. why should the Congress the president not go? Needed. Why should the Congress president travel? Then leave it to the state Congress <laughs> unit. Yes, uh, uh, I, agree. Sanjuala, I agree to that also. Lal Sanjuala, what do you have to say? Is there a problem in the country or not? because of these constant elections. <coughs> yes, there is. There is a problem with constant election in the country. In what way? MNF supports, because if there are any constant election in the country, how will the, gover how will the government uh, mechanisms go? It so will hamper so the, 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 the governing in mechanisms everywhere. of the country. Obviously. No. <coughs> that no. is obvious, very Absolutely. obvious. Absolutely. Now, Kishore Desai, Kishore Desai, <coughs> you know, let us look at that. Let's take a look a little bit at the expenditure part. You know, I'm running short of time. Let's look at uh, let's look at the expenditure part. Now, take the case of the 2019 elections. Now, there are various estimates. It ranges between 10,000 crores to 60,000 crores expenditure incurred during the 2090 elections. Now, if we have elections throughout the country, throughout the year, don't you think it leads to the very, very high level of corruption in all across the country? Uh, you know, so do you think uh, one nation, one election, the simultaneous election, or one election every five years, it, do you think it will curb elect, uh, corruption in a big way, or it is going to be the same? What do you think? I think, I think absolutely, I think you have just hit the nail on its head. Uh, see, when we talk about uh, expenditure in election, there are two types of expenditures. One, there is an expenditure by the government, yeah. meaning state government or the central government. Yeah. Uh, so, in 2014, for example, the Lok Sabha, the cost of Lok Sabha elections to the government was around 4,000 crores. But actual expenditure is main, I mean the major expenditure, the bulk of the expenditure on elections is incurred by political parties and candidates. Wherein we hear the figures like 30,000, 40,000. So you know the figures that you are mentioning 10,000 crores to 60,000 crores, I presume that it will be an expenditure incurred by both candidates and political parties together. Yes, yes, yes. Now you know what is happening is this sort of sets in. So if I am a candidate and if I have invested money, if I win then my natural instinct will be somehow to recover. So that's the uh, genesis of corruption in the first place. So, if you keep incurring expenditure every now and then for elections to parliament and state assembly, you will end up investing more and you will always be in that mode of recovering money. Okay, now uh, the point then don't is, hold election, I don't know give if it to the having simultaneous elections per election, se, no, 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 yeah. you're, you're talking about finishing how the much conclu in, uh, your concluding remarks, Trip Chalia, how much money yeah. had you spent? Yeah. That was several years ago, of yeah. course. See, make uh, it public today. See, 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 I think BJP in the last election, 
Yeah, Power Constituency, they must have spent 10 crores only from the party fund. And, and from the personal fund, it's unlimited. It was a huge money which, which won them the election. So, so Kareem so, Salia gives <laughs> only... Uh, Samuel Barwa, uh, I, your response. I don't know. I think I, I, I can laugh only louder. That will be my only response. I think that, thank goodness, Kirip is coming up with these astounding figures as to uh, party, uh, one candidate getting 10 crores and he's spending more. I think it's entirely... That's the information from BJP source. No, I think that BJP must be some other BJP, not the Bharatiya Janta Party. You're okay, 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 okay. We'll, we'll, we'll leave wait. it at that. We'll, wait. we'll leave it at. We'll leave it at that. Not. Let's not waste time on this. But very interesting. Uh, uh, you know, a change there. Uh, Achum Bemo, your parting comments. Uh, what do you think is going to happen now? What is the road ahead on this, as far as this issue is concerned? Okay, Achum Bemo is disconnected. Uh, Doctor Lal Sanjwala, what are your uh, final comments? Well, I said, uh, election throughout the year in India has hampered the government mechanisms. But I do not say that one nation, one vote may be the best solution to reduce the election expenditure, a huge amount of ele election expenditure or the corruption which is going on during the election. Uh, one nation, one vote yeah. may not be the best solution. So before implementing this one nation, one vote in India, we need to deliberate at the state level. We need to aware the political leaders. We need to aware the people, especially the, in the uh, northeast states. Okay. We need to weigh the pros and cons of this okay. election. Very briefly, uh, one wants nation, to one vote. I, 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 I can't help commenting that Mizoram is one state. The people of Mizoram has taken, taken, taken care to see that corruption is totally gets evaporated from election. Why cannot people rise to that everywhere? Yeah, yeah, that is, of course, I agree. I cannot agree with you more. This is needs to be tackled. At least we agreed on one point in this entire 90 minutes. Achumbemo uh, Kikon, Achumbemo. Okay, Achumbemo is not yet connected with us. We'll get back to Achumbemo. Uh, Prasenjit Biswas, your final comments. Uh, just as Lord Meghnath Desai has suggested, there should be state funding of elections so that private parties won't have to spend funds and should not behave in an immoral, financially immoral manner. Unless we introduce that kind of an electoral reform, talk about one election or multiple election actually is leading us to a certain kind of dead end. So right. whether we are ready to implement transparency, yeah. electoral bonds have not been transparent. The okay. political parties' accounts have not been transparent. Are we able to bring in that kind of transparency in the democracy or not is a major question. Absolutely. Achum Memo Kikon, your final comments on this entire issue. Where do you see this issue going? Well, uh, this may be possible maybe after 20, 25 years from now. But as of now... India as a country is not ready for this kind of concept. We can still keep on debating, find out the best possible option. But uh, from our perspective, there is uh, a lot of rooms to maneuver here. There is a lo lot of rooms to misuse. And therefore, uh, practically, it is not feasible. And therefore, it has to be keep on kept on hold. And uh, more opinion should be sought before we put it on the ground. So, Abnil Barua, uh, my, uh, debate has to go on, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. It debate cannot be kept on hold. Uh, see, until, until, and, un, until the time you reach a solution that is acceptable to most people, I think you'll, you'll have to go no, on debating. That is, that is definitely... And well, I think irrespective of how much time it takes. It, in fact, if you ask me for a concluding remark, I would say that you cannot stop an idea whose time has come. And I think in the 75th year of the democratic uh, India, we shall arrive at a consensus about one uh, election and one oh. Oh. Uh, simultaneously happening in the country. And that will definitely, you know, increase the pace of development and also keep our democracy strong and vibrant as envisaged by okay. the founding all right, fathers. Alright, alright. Uh, final comments, uh, Kishore Desai to you. I, I'm running short of time, 20 seconds. Yeah, I think this is an issue of uh, huge national importance and I would say that going forward we can expect a lot of national debate uh, across the spectrum uh, on this issue.
absolutely lot of debates necessary across the spectrum. And as Sopnil Barua has very nicely put it, an idea whose time has come. Uh, whether it is implemented or not is a different story, but no one can deny that any critical issue needs to be debated. It cannot, solution cannot come overnight, but no one can stop people from debating issues. On that note, I end this edition of Notice tonight. I thank all my panelists for participating in this very, very engaging discussion. Good night and goodbye. <laughs>